Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about virtual instruments and rendering virtual instruments to audio. So first of all, what's a virtual instrument? Well, a virtual instrument tends to be something like perhaps Superior Drummer, oh, which is giving me the pinwheel to load. There we go. Okay, so Superior Drummer is a virtual instrument, right? It's a software-based instrument that runs in real time and plays back MIDI data typically, although these can also be used as an effect. So things like Superior Drummer, Falcon, any of the built-in uh, plugins we might have, like DB33 and Expand, all those guys. So typically, virtual instruments go on either an instrument track or, which is again an aux input plus MIDI data, right? or it will go on an aux input and then we'll send MIDI data to it. But you can also put some virtual instruments on audio tracks. So I have this guitar track here. Sounds like this right now. So I might be able to put some virtual instruments on there, like for instance, the DB33. So that guy is the organ sampler for uh, Pro Tools, right? So one of the things that we can do is add it as an effect. And it can serve as a preamp or a rotating speaker simulation as well. So you can hear that here. So let's solo that track real quick and hear what we can do with this. So for instance, this DB33 can add that speaker wobble to the sound of this guitar track. All right, so one of the problems with virtual instruments is that you can't put a fade on MIDI data. So I can't just fade this out like I want to. Maybe I just want to fade out this drum clip at the end of a track uh, or just treat it to some audio processing like I normally would with audio or even just edit the audio like it's audio and not MIDI data. So a couple of things you can do to very quickly and easily make MIDI data into audio. Uh, you might also have the issue of, so there's also the issue of trying to collaborate on a session and one person has a plugin and another person doesn't. So what you can do is also when you render this to audio, it means that you don't need the plugin anymore. It's been created into uh, regular audio that is now fixed. So there's a couple ways to do it that are easy. So one is to create a new track with the same channel settings, so both stereo or both mono, and then audio track. So I've now got an audio track, and this is going to be my drums track, but it's going to be regular audio. So what I can do is really easily just grab this clip and click and drag it into the other audio track. And you'll see a little rendering bar, and there it is, regular audio. So I don't need that plugin anymore. So we've got that audio now. Now we can put that fade if we want. Now I've got a fade there. And maybe I want to do some other, you know, neat tricks that only work on audio files. Uh, now I can do them here. Another way to do it. So one is click and drag. It will automatically print that virtual instrument data to an audio clip. The other way to do it is you can, or another way to do it, is to click this little snowflake icon to freeze the track. And there's several ways to freeze a track. This is the easiest probably. So I just click this and it renders you'll see a little progress bar and then there it is so when we do it this way you kind of see the audio superimposed over the midi data so here let me zoom in a little bit see how the midi data is still kind of under there and then we can play this back now again whoever you share this with now does not need superior drummer in order to be able to work with this audio. They'll hear everything they need, even without having bought that plugin. Now you can freeze a track a couple of different ways. So there's the snowflake icon. You can also go track while it's, while your uh, edit cursor is in there. You can go track and then freeze. 
right now it's unfreeze because I've already frozen it. How about I unfreeze it? It should process for me for a sec. There's my pinwheel. There it goes back to MIDI. And now if I want to freeze it, track, freeze is there. And then I'll see my progress bar. And again, frozen track. Good. One other way to do it is right click the track nameplate and you can also freeze and unfreeze there. So three quick ways to freeze and unfreeze a track. And you can do this with regular audio tracks where there's like a reverb plugin or something, aux inputs. You can make all of these render to regular audio by freezing them. And that way, whoever you're collaborating with will be guaranteed to hear the audio the same way you are because all the same plugins and things will be fixed there. Uh, one problem that comes up when you freeze versus when you actually print the audio is this you can edit, but the frozen audio you cannot edit. So you can edit the audio that's printed to an audio track, but you cannot edit frozen audio. So depending on what you want, uh, you may need to go one way or the other. And that's it, how to render some virtual instrument data to regular audio so that you can edit it or process it or share it. All right, see you in the next one.